Having used Twinmotion and D5 Render for architecture rendering for the past seven plus years, I've encountered countless forum debates and YouTube videos comparing which rendering softwares are the best. But today, I am finally settling the debate by comparing Twinmotion 2025 and D5 Render 2.10 by scoring the software out of five points in several different categories, starting with compatibility and workflow, then working our way up to different stages of rendering with unique features sprinkled within, and then concluding with a comparison of the final renderings. So to answer your question, which rendering software is the best, we will start with compatibility and workflow by importing our 3D models into each rendering software. D5 Render and Twinmotion are compatible with every 3D modeling software, but for a full list of which softwares are compatible with this live sync feature, I'll leave a link in the description below. By integrating the Live Sync plugin into your workflow, you no longer have to resave your project every time you make an update. Instead, it saves you a ton of time and all you have to do is click a button to sync the changes. And if you really wanna get advanced, you can also sync the view of your 3D model to get real-time rendering in D5 or Twinmotion. Now, I recommend you have a super strong computer in order to do this. Otherwise, it's gonna slow down everything. Next, I will show you how to improve your renderings by applying materials. These are the library materials for both software. And for the sake of the video, I'll only be using materials that are native to the software and a part of the free version. The easiest way to apply materials is actually to divide everything up by layer and different color in the 3D model. So when you click and drop materials in D5, it'll apply to all the objects with that base color. So make sure you just don't import everything as white. With Twin Motion, I would still recommend the same strategy, but if you forgot and you're already on a time crunch, that's totally okay because there's a feature that allows you to apply a material to an individual object. I think either way of applying materials is great, but I just hated going back and forth between the software. And plus, I really like the feature in Twin Motion where you could apply a material to an individual object and not just by layer. Now, sometimes materials don't always want to apply correctly as you see here, but luckily for you, D5 Render and Twin Motion have different solutions for that problem. With D5, when you click on a material, you're allowed to turn on Triplanar and UV randomizer. And this really helps with materials where you don't want a repetitive pattern. With Twin Motion, you have the ability to change the applied UV map. But in addition, Twin Motion allows you to turn on the triplanar and UV randomizer, just like D5 Render, and gives you pretty similar results. But a bonus feature that Twin Motion has is using the grudge feature within the material. You can turn up the slider and give each material a little bit more wear so that it doesn't look brand new. Let's say you hate the materials in D5 and Twin Motion. Well, there's a solution for everything, right? In Twin Motion, you can go to the materials tab and then click the plus sign to add a material. And then you go to the properties panel and you can add the individual maps to the new material that you're creating. In D5, you go to the material library and click on other then the type of material you want to create. But there's two great features within D5 Render that allow you to make this material creation process a lot easier. Number one is using the batch PBR import. Now, instead of individually dragging and dropping each texture map, you can just batch select all the PBR texture maps that you downloaded from a website. And this next one is my favorite because it doesn't require you to pay for any textures. And it is the AI generative texture map. All you have to do is find an image of a texture that you like, maybe on Google or Pinterest or something like that drag it into D5 and it'll create all the different texture maps that you need, the depth, the normal map, etc. And just like that, you have a brand new texture. Here are the results of completing the first step of applying materials. Here are my scores for the materials section. What stood out to me was how easy it was to import custom materials in the D5 render, whether it's using the batch tool or creating your own using the AI texture generator. But so far it's neck and neck with D5 winning by a hair. But we are just getting started because next we're gonna add even more context to the scene by adding people and vehicles. The best way to give an architecture rendering scale is by adding people. But cars are also nice to have, so I guess I'll add some of those too. These are the libraries for people for Twin Motion and D5 Render, which include posed figures, groups, 2D cutouts, and more. And for vehicles, here are the selections of each. Now, if you happen to run out of variety and you just get bored with the main assets within the software, here are some alternatives. For D5 Render, you can utilize the additional library of scanned assets, which is over 200. Similarly, Twinmotion has the Megascan and Sketchfab libraries with a ton of additional assets and materials for you to use in your projects completely free. But I still think something's missing. Let's add some site context. And no, I'm not gonna make you download anything from the internet or make you go to Google Earth. It's actually a lot easier than that. OpenStreetMaps 
is actually built in to D5 render and Twin Motion. Twin Motion has actually had this for a while, but D5 just recently introduced it in their most recent update. And this allows you to place building massing from around the world onto your site so that you have context around your building and you don't have to model it yourself. Now, generally it's mostly just white blocks, so it's not very detailed, but at this point, anything can help. Here are the scores for the assets section for both software. And right off the bat, you can see a significant difference in scoring in selection and customization of assets. And this is because for the selection in D5, it's a little bit limited in the free version. There are a ton of people available in D5, but in order to have access, you have to get the paid version. And I just think Twin Motion has a lot better customization of assets when it comes to creating different people and movements within the individual characters, as well as materials for the vehicles. So far, we've live synced our model, added materials and assets, and Twin Motion is in the lead. But let's move on next to vegetation. The scene still feels a little empty, so now it's time to place some vegetation. There are two ways we can go about this process. One, you can individually place every plant and every tree and spend the whole day doing that. If that's what you wanna do, go ahead and do it. But before you do that, let me tell you, there's a lot faster way to go about this process. You can use the populate tools in both D5 and Twin Motion to place multiple vegetation elements at once, either via brush, scatter tool, or path tool. As you can see, this method is not only faster, but the settings allow you to randomize the vegetation scale and path to make it more realistic. Twin Motion also allows you to populate vegetation in a defined area, which you can see here is incredibly effective with a large amount of trees. Though I wouldn't recommend doing this if you're running it off of your laptop, things might just go haywire. When it comes to vegetation, details matter because out in nature, nothing is perfect. And sometimes the most realistic rendering is one that portrays the disorder of everyday elements. So I'm just painting some detail grass here in the foreground of the rendering. Something no other rendering software has but D5 is the terrain tool. Tell me this thing isn't amazing. It does take a little bit of practice to get comfortable with, but I'd say D5 has a step up right here. For the vegetation section, here are my scores. And I felt like both software did an excellent job with the tools that they have to apply vegetation like trees and bushes so that you don't have to individually place those assets. But where Twin Motion set itself apart in this section was with customization. With Twin Motion's vegetation assets, I felt like there was more opportunities to customize. And with one category left, Twin Motion has increased its lead. We have since added materials, people, vehicles, and vegetation. And wow, what a difference that makes. But before I compare the final rendering of each, let's do a quick breakdown comparing D5 Render and Twin Motion. It might be important to see if your poor little laptop can even handle either of the software. Here are the basic requirements for D5 Render, and then here are the basic requirements for Twin Motion. You can pause the video and I'll leave a link in the description so you can check it out yourself. Now, if you made it past that step and your computer can still run effectively, congrats. But then you probably wanna know how much it's gonna cost you to use these software. Both software are free for students and have community versions, but for commercial use, you have to pay for both of them. The only difference is D5 holds some assets behind a paywall, so you don't get access to everything in the free version. But up to this point, I've only used free assets in D5 Render anyway, just to prove you can do just fine with what's provided. Anything else is just a bonus at that point, but if you have the money, I would highly recommend getting D5 Pro. Looking into the future of the industry, AI has been a very prevalent topic of conversation and something D5 Render has welcomed and integrated into their software. With tools like the AI texture mapping tool that I showed earlier, text the 3D image, AI atmosphere match, and the AI image enhancer, tools I will use later in this video. Printmotion doesn't have any AI tools, but has been consistently improving throughout the years, and I see them continuing to step up their game to compete with other rendering software in the industry. Both also have great learning resources on their websites, as well as communities that help you through any issues that you may be having. That may seem like a little thing in the grand scheme of things, but it means they are passionate to help their users grow skills and knowledge about the software. My key takeaway from this section is how D5 is continuing to improve their product and it proves that they're listening to their users. This can be seen in their integration of AI tools as well as the consistent updates that they provide throughout the year. And for the final category of additional features for each software, this is my scoring. And D5 has a huge comeback, mostly carried by their AI tools 
like text to 3D, AI texture generation, AI image enhance, etc. Plus their new terrain feature. And just in general, I feel like D5 is constantly leveling up their additional features. But I also think Twinmotion has a decent amount of additional features, like being able to import massing from OpenStreetMap. But now the scores are tied. So let's go to the final render. Here are the final renderings at 4K. But what if I told you that D5 rendering was actually AI? Well, that wouldn't be completely true. But in order to achieve the final rendering, I did use two AI tools in the process. I first used the AI Atmosphere Match tool using a sunset image from Google. But ultimately, I wanted to have consistent lighting between the renderings. So I took the rendering I did in Twin Motion and imported it in to match the lighting almost exactly. And then I finally rendered the D5 image, but we're not done yet because then I brought it into the AI image enhancer tool. And with that, I was able to increase the quality of the reflections, shadows, and assets within the image. And just for fun, I rendered both images at the highest quality of 16K. But the most significant difference that I noticed was you can zoom in really far and the quality still remains the same. And to break the tie, let me know in the comments below which rendering software you think is better.